What was the feeling when the gates were locked at Ayrson Park? That's from David Hodgson. Brilliant. No, seriously, uh, when the gates were locked, um, I couldn't believe it. I mean, I had not long been in Teesside. This was my first season, uh, being a full-time professional. And for the gates to be locked was an absolute travesty. You know, I had my first mortgage. I was struggling financially. Uh, we weren't on great sums of money back then. But for the gates to be locked, then the future became very, very uncertain. And it was very difficult times, individually, collectively, and obviously for all the families concerned. So very, very difficult times. Two quick Borough questions. One from Marty Well. Will Borough survive this season? This season coming? Oh, we'll survive. Will we be challenging for top six? I hope so. But the minute it's a bit of a hypothetical question because we don't know who we're going to rope in. I don't think there'll be any household names coming in. I believe the scouting network, including the manager and the coaching staff, have been all around Europe. Um, let's see who they drag in. Uh, from Steak, Steve Sullivan, who was your first professional goal against? First professional goal against? Um, for the first team. I think it was, and I've got a bad memory as you as well know, I think it was Erdry for Morton. I mean, I was only a French player, I didn't play that many games, but I think I scored my first professional goal at top level uh, against Erdry. A couple of football questions, one from Andrew Gold. What would you have done to play for Celtic? What would I have done to play for Celtic? Um, no, I mean, when I was younger, Celtic was everything to me. You know, I was a supporter. I'd, my boyhood heroes, Doug Leash and Danny McGrain, Davy Proven, Jockstein, the manager. I grew up with them guys, but as, as I got older and I, and I started to settle into England, it wasn't as appealing. No, don't get me wrong. If I could rewind the clock, I'd like one year at Celtic. My father in the crowd, 60,000 singing all the songs that I was brought up with uh, and to score against Rangers would have been my ultimate dream. I'd have given away 50 Middlesbrough goals just to score the winner against Rangers. Simon Lambert asks, would you follow Cooper and Hignett into coaching or management? Um, I've did a few um, coaching badges over the years, prelims and UEFA Bs and I, I was um, I was sort of getting pushed that way oh, about 10 or 11 years ago to go for my full badge and qualifications. But I know a lot of my friends who have played football at Middlesbrough have got the full licences, but they can't get jobs. There's only X amount of jobs available. Um, if it was like a Gary Southgate scenario, when they come up and says, Bernie, you can have the job, just go for your full badge, I would go for it. But the minute, I just think it's, uh, I think the whole coaching thing's a load of nonsense, to be brutally honest. I think at the end of the day, you get your coach, the manager's something totally different. You don't go in these courses learn about management. You go to how to structure your team and how to defend, score a goal, and then they're talking about there's too much jargon in the, the courses for me. You, you need to be a school teacher or a university graduate like yourself, John. But you need to read through mountains of books. I'm a footballer. Football is simple. Simple game played with simple people complicated by fools. Ozzy Braithwaite asks, do you wish you'd play for Sunderland? When I was leaving Middlesbrough, I'd love to have went to Sunderland. I couldn't believe that Sunderland went for Davenport. He had a nightmare at Middlesbrough, and here was me, scored over 100 goals, and Sunderland went looking at me. I was on the doorstep. So really, uh, that would have been the ideal place to go when I was leaving Middlesbrough, because I wouldn't have had to uproot. A couple of random ones now. Arthur Bainbridge asked what your favourite movie is. Uh, that Swedish one, what's that bird called? Uh, just pole dancer. No, seriously. Um Favourite film, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, Jack Nicholson, without a shadow of a doubt, not even open to debate, best film I've ever seen, it's touching, it's funny, it's moving and everything rolled into one, and that boat, I don't know if you've seen it, but the boat when all the the guys that were on the right went in the boat, I'd have loved to have been on that boat, I think I'd have blinded them, <laughs> well. Joe Gray asks, how much do you uh, charge to haunt houses? Oh, I think you're the right man, I think there's one. There's two guys out there can answer that one. <laughs> <laughs> Ian Simpson, uh, what's your passport nationality? Uh, believe it or not, I could I could be in possession of an Irish passport as well as a British passport. There was a lot of, there was a bit of conundrum when I was trying to apply for my Irish passport, but I had all the the qualifications. But I think you can get to more places in the world without any hassle with a British passport as opposed to an Irish one. So I just stuck to the the British one. And finally, from uh, Mark Trory, uh, he's heard rumours that you're a fetish for lady boys. Is that true? Don't know if you've tried it, you know, if they come around and if they're either Adams that one, I don't care what they are. Just have a go at it. <laughs>